Welcome to Medlacto. Today we are going to discuss vitamin B7 or you can say biotin. It is actually a water soluble vitamin. It means that it can be excreted from the body easily. And it is actually fall in the energy releasing vitamins. And it is very much important in the productions of the energy. So, uh, first of all, if we see uh, the different sources of the biotin, so most important three sources. So, if you see here, first one is the milk, okay, next is the egg yolk, that is the second most important source of the biotin. And third one, if you see, like the third one is the liver. So, these are three most important sources of the vitamins, B7 or you can say biotin. So actually biotin works as a coenzyme or you can say cofactor. It works along with the enzyme. So if you see here like this is the enzyme and that enzyme is the carboxylase. Okay. This enzyme is actually the carboxylase enzyme. So actually biotin acts as a coenzyme. So if you see here like this way. This is, let's suppose, a schematic diagram of the biotin, just for the understanding. So, if you see like, this is the biotin, okay. Now, that will act as a co-enzyme. This biotin will attach to the enzyme, because biotin must be attached to the enzyme. So, actually, biotin will attach to the enzyme, that is carboxylase, with the lysyl residue of the enzyme, lysine. So, this is the most important thing, lysyl residue of the enzyme will attach to the biotin. Okay, this is the one thing. Second thing is most important, this biotin is actually a carrier of carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide will attach to the biotin. That's why it is actually a carrier of carbon dioxide. That is biotin. Okay. Next, if you see, like when the substrate, if I say, when the substrate enter to the enzyme, that will act on the active side, so actually carbon dioxide will pass to the substrate, okay, and that is why this reaction is called the carboxylation reaction, in which you will see the additions of the carbon dioxide. So different actually, different categories actually fall in this uh, enzyme. So you can see acetyl carboxylase. Okay, this is the one thing. Okay, you can also see pyruvate propionyl, propionyl carboxylase. You will just add the name of the substrate. If the acetyl add to the enzyme, then it is called acetyl carboxylase. When the pyruvate add to the active site, then I say that the pyruvate carboxylase. Propionyl add to the active site, then I say propionyl carboxylase. And last, most important is the methyl, methyl crotonyl carboxylase. So these are basically, you will just change the name of the substrate, then the uh, enzyme name will change. Okay. This is the mechanism that how biotin will act. Next, biotin deficiency uh, doesn't happen suddenly. It is not occur naturally. So, why? There are two reasons that biotin deficiency is not uh, happen suddenly. First thing is the, you will see, if I write with black color. So, if you see, first it is actually distributed, widely distributed in food. This is the one reason. And second reason is the intestinal flora. So actually, biotin also produced in our intestine. So these are basically the two most important uh, reasons that why biotin deficiency is not happen suddenly. Okay. Next most important thing, 
uh, we discussed that the biotin actually present in the egg yolk. Okay. If you see like here is the egg and at the center you will see the presence of the yolk. Biotin is actually present at the in the yolk. But there is an other glycoprotein and that is the avidin. Avidin that is actually present in the egg white. That is central will be the yellowish area that is yolk and surrounding will be the white tissue or transparent area that is actually the called the egg white. Okay. In which you will see the presence of the avidin. Okay. Avidin and biotin interact strongly whenever they come across. Okay. If we take the only egg white, raw egg white, raw egg white or you can say uncooked egg white along with the diet having biotin. So let's suppose uh, if someone takes uh, food having biotin. So if I say that biotin is actually present in food and that move in the stomach and ultimately it enter into the intestine. So here is the biotin. This is the biotin. Okay. Now if someone take raw egg white along with the diet. So in as we know that the raw egg white contain the avidin. So avidin also moves with the diet and in the intestine you will see the avidin will interact with the biotin. So here is the interaction or the binding of the avidin with the biotin. So you will see the avidin will interact with the biotin and that's why the avidin prevent the absorptions of the biotin into the bloodstream. Uh, if you see here is the bloodstream and when the avidin bind to the biotin then this creates hindrance in the absorptions of the biotin in the uh, bloodstream. So that's why it is not recommended to take the raw egg white along with diets. But there is another important thing. It doesn't uh, happen suddenly that because it is say that 20 eggs per day and raw egg will cause the biotin deficiency because egg, egg white contain the avidin and avidin bind the biotin and that prevent the absorptions of the biotin. Okay. This is the reason. When we cook the food, there is another question that when we cook the food, then what will happen? Then the avidin that is actually present in the egg white will neutralize. So in this case, when we uh, in, uh, consume the cooked egg, then in this case, avidin become neutralized and in this case, biotin can easily absorb from the intestine. Okay, this is the reason. In case when you see the deficiency of the biotin, then you see the different uh, symptoms like first one is the dermatitis. Dermatitis, this is the first thing. Second, you can also see loss of appetite. Appetite, that's it. And you can also see loss of hair. And you can also see the nausea. So these are basically the different symptoms when you will see the uh, biotin deficiency. And last, most important, you can, uh, there is an other disadvantage. When someone take the raw egg white, then what will happen? Because there is a chances of the presence of the salmonella. So there is a chances of the presence of the salmonella enterica that can cause the salmonellosis. So it is not recommended to take the raw egg white because it can contain the salmonella that can cause salmonellosis. So this is all about the vitamin B7 or you can say biotin. If you have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.